Hello, I'm Rosemary Connolly from Aspillion Art League, and I'm here today at the studio of Gandhi Hurwitz. He has been a resident for four years at the Sean Kelly Art Gallery at Penny Lane in Rehoboth Beach. And he's going to talk to us today about his beautiful photography and what inspires him and how he creates these beautiful images. So then come along with us. Here's Gandhi. Gandhi, tell us a little bit about your background. What other jobs have you had besides photography? Well, first job I ever had that actually paid was I was 13 years old and I worked at a butcher shop in Elkton, Maryland. It's a tiny little town in Cecil County. And um, the guy paid me under the table and my parents were good with it. And I learned how to cut meat and do all that stuff and wrap the meat. Interesting. And yeah, it was my first job. And over the years, I did paper routes and all kinds of stuff. And then later in life, I got into restaurant work, uh, done pretty much everything in restaurants. Every, you know, all the way up to fine dining, um, but server, busser, dishwasher, cook, <laughs> uh, manager. I've done it all pretty much in restaurants and uh, a lot of great memories doing that. Then I've done traveling sales. I've done marketing, digital marketing. Mm -hmm. I was self-employed as a videographer for about 15 years. I ran a video production company. I'm, most of my work was in Baltimore, Washington area, mm -hmm. and I did about, geez, Hundreds, I would say about between three and four hundred weddings a year. I had a bunch of people working for me. It was kind of crazy. <laughs> uh, and after that, I had a traveling job where I bought antiques for people. I've done a lot of stuff. Interesting. You know, I've sort of been a wanderer, you know, you could say. <laughs> oh, but I, awesome. I'm a hard worker. I've always worked hard my whole life. That's awesome. I'm still working. Yeah, I yeah. can see that. Okay. Um, so at what time in your, in your life did you realize that you were creative? I had a filmmaker who uh, was one of my babysitters, and he taught me how to use film cameras back then. Of course, it's actual film, right. and we made little movies. Oh, no kidding! Yeah, on little awesome. Kodak uh, movie cameras. Yeah. And um, I guess my mom and I said, you know, my mom was an amateur photographer. She lived in Paris for a while while she was in school. Her work was actually pretty good. Looking back on it, I sure as hell wish I would have had some of it now. Mm -hmm. But anyway, she had this collection of old cameras. And she taught me a bit about still photography when I was a kid because she saw I had an interest. Yeah. I got my first camera as a Christmas present when I was 10 years old, 9 wow. or 10. Wow. My mom showed me a bit about how to use it. Babysitters showed me more. I just kept going. Oh, and, you know, um, life ensues from that point. But, yeah, it's, it, it was early. So tell me, how has your practice changed over time? Yeah. But when I came to this gallery four years ago, I had one particular style. Style is now completely different. How has it changed? I really had to ask myself, who am I as, as an artist? Who am I as a photographer? Right. Am I trying to do memorialized images, snapshots, things that look like real life? Mm -hmm. And I found that I really wasn't because what was important to me was connecting with humanity common thread that sort of holds us all together, I would feel something sitting in a certain situation and I was became more interested in creating an image that imparted what I was feeling in that moment rather than just what my eyes were seeing. Right. Because quite frankly, what my eyes were seeing could never convey that. Mm. So I became more impressionistic in my work. Mm -hmm. That was my epiphany. Mm -hmm. Then I began looking at artists, painters, of all kinds. Mm -hmm. Started looking at Jamie Wyeth, mm -hmm. paintings like Night Sleeper. I went to the Chad's Ford Museum, Pennsylvania, stood right in front of it, looked at it, looked at the light. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'd mm -hmm. already been studying Ansel Adams since I was in college. Mm -hmm. Right. So right. I understand I read the book, The Print, mm -hmm. but it, it kind of it didn't resonate. But now all of a sudden, all this started sort of forming resonating together at once. Sure. Now, you're shooting film, so do you develop your own film no, then? No, not at all. Um, I have not actually been in a dark room since I was maybe 21 years old and taking college courses. Um, and frankly, although I do know a few people who still shoot on film, right. I can't think of any of them. They're still doing a dark room in their house. Right. Because now you can just send it out to a good lab. Right. So you're, everything that you're doing is really done in camera. Um, well, yeah. Well, here's the thing. I, we talked about Ansel Adams. Mm -hmm. So 
and and the book The Print, which obviously you've read, I can tell just from by what you're saying. Yeah. And you've been in the dark. Taking classes. Yeah, you've taken classes. Right. So here's the thing. It's a method, right? Right. So you gotta have good in-camera images. And you have to, and that's your how, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you get it all down, your ISO, your shutter speed, right? Yeah. Everything you need, and you dial it in, you get the best you can get, and then you go to the dark room, and you do what Ansel Adams did, and it took him two to three months sometimes to do one image. He He's in the it. dark room, mm -hmm. cutting and burning, mm -hmm. you know, dodging, throwing right. up shadows, pulling down shadows, darkening, lightening. That's what he did. He, mm -hmm. he got a good image in camera, right. but none of his famous images came out of his camera. They came right. out of the dark room. Yeah. So what I do... I get the image that I'm in love with, mm -hmm. that I felt something when I was creating. Right. And then I don't want to deal with dark room anymore because those chemicals are frankly nasty. Yes, they are. They're nasty. Mm -hmm. I use something called light room, which is the exact same process that Ansel used, but there's no chemicals. It still okay. takes a long time. So I, I think I know the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway, and that is what, what actually inspires you? Is it, is it nature mostly? Are your, are, is your photography mostly focused on, on nature shots or nature images? I feel like photography in some ways kind of saved my life. Mm -hmm. You know, some people, it's hard to describe, but, right, so this image right here, both these images, I'm waiting for the sun to, to, to rise. There's no one around, mm -hmm. you know, and you're just waiting and a little bit of light comes in into view. The sky just starts lightning and then the birds start to make noise. Mm -hmm. The waves are crashing. That smell. Mm -hmm. And it just makes you feel something. Mm -hmm. It's hard to describe, but whatever it is that might be bothering you, mm -hmm. it's not as big is what you're feeling. Mm -hmm. Something greater than yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that, that's what inspires me. You get me. lost in it. You get lost in it. That's what I want to share with the world. That's what makes me do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nature. Right. Wildlife. Yeah. Right. And I, um, what's the best advice you've been given? That's a great question. Man, that's a great question because I've been blessed truly blessed in my life to have been given some good advice. Most of the time I've never followed it, <laughs> but it's always good to know it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'm just going to throw this back to my mom. And actually my mom and my grandma were great influences on me. Mm -hmm. And I think they both told me essentially the same thing, but just in a very different way. So my mom talked about the hand on your back that you feel once in a while. Just a little push. Mm. It's so light you wonder if it was really there, mm. but somehow you end up getting pushed in the right way. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty interesting. I think I think that might be some of the best advice I ever got was to yeah. pay, atten pay attention yeah. to that. When it comes, and it doesn't come that often, but when it does come, pay attention to it. Right, it's yeah. sort of like when an opportunity knocks, you know. Take advantage. It's a lot of things, yeah. yeah. But yeah, that's that's part of it, sure. Right. Yeah. Right. So do you want to talk about any one of these in particular that is a favorite of yours? I know you'd like to share some information. Um, yeah, let me talk about a couple of these, okay. if you wouldn't mind. Sure. Um, now, here's the, I do a lot of black and whites, mm. for example. So, But I don't really display a lot of those here because some people love them, and I sell them on the website. But a lot of people here want beach stuff. Yeah. But this one, for example... I, I do sort of this black and white style that I call uh, farm gothic, sort of rural Americana in decay, like grapes of wrath kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so much of that in, in, in Sussex County. And there was a lot of that growing up in Pennsylvania where I grew up too. Yeah. I just kind of fell in love with it. There was all these old barns when I grew up and mm. we were kids just kind of exploring these old broken down barns and you smell the barn too. wood and the hay cooking <laughs> in the sun and, yeah. you know, these bees nests and stuff and we're running around. Texture. And I just, I just, uh, I just took it all to heart. So I've got a series like this that I work on, black and white textures that I, mm -hmm. I love doing. Mm -hmm. um, Great shadows. I would like to uh, talk a little bit about this one here. I call this one Sea Dreams. 
This is at Henlopen, sun's rising. There's all these large waves coming, crashing. But you don't see a single wave in this picture because the long exposure mm -hmm. smooths all the waves out. Mm -hmm. This is not what my eyes are seeing. This is what my heart's feeling. So if you notice the clouds up here are blurred, they're moving because at a 25 second exposure with a neutral density filter, the clouds are blowing. And that's why you see all that, that dreamy blurred look up there. The water is completely smoothed out and this white mist is created because of what it does. Um, and of course, the sky, the colors in the sky are a little magnified in the water itself because of the long exposure. And I've also added a polarizing filter. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I call it sea dreams because as I'm sitting there out on the rocks, watching the sunrise, there's not another person in sight. And I can never figure that out. You'd think more people would want to come out there with the sun's rising. It's off season, of course. But the point is, I've got something on my mind. I'm thinking I'm working through this or that. And I'm sitting there and the waves are crashing and gulls are singing. And I can feel myself just relaxing. And it starts looking really dreamlike. And I create this image. It's not what my eyes are seeing. It's what my heart is feeling. Mm -hmm. And that's impressionistic, and that's the type of work that I want to be known for. Yeah, it's beautiful. I got one more to show you. Okay. So over here in the corner uh, is the Comet Neowise, and in the background is the Lewis Fishing Pier. So I've had some people say to me, I've been there, it doesn't look like that. <laughs> of, course, of course it doesn't look like that. It didn't look like that to me. I mean, if I use... A 15 millimeter wide lens, it's not going to look like what your eye sees. It's going to look completely different. Your eye sees maybe 45 millimeters, right? Or, you know, so I couldn't see the hand in front of my face when I took that picture. I took it on my birthday, comment Nia Wise. Lewis Fish and Pier in the background, right? So I had the app on my phone telling me where the comet was. The app was right. There it is. And long exposure lights the sky up. I couldn't see the comet with my eyes, but my camera saw it. And there it is. So I keep playing it. Maybe 50 shots later, I've got it all dialed in. The orange there, that is light pollution from the Jersey Shore. I couldn't hmm. see that either. Interesting. Yeah. So it's another example of it's not what my eyes see, it's what the camera sees and how I do that. Last one I'll talk about, because I know we don't have all day, <laughs> is this. Is a photograph of the Van Buren Street Bridge in Wilmington, Delaware. It's one of the oldest examples of a poured concrete bridge in Delaware. It was made around the same time by the same people that did the bridges in Central Park in New York. Anyway, it's an iconic Delaware uh, landmark. And the Brandywine River runs this way and the canals run this way. Most people in Wilmington love this, this bridge in the area. So I've been walking by this bridge my whole life. Parents took me there. I took my daughter there when she was little, et cetera, et cetera. Love the park. One day I'm walking by there and I got my telephone lens. And the sun is just coming over the hill. There's a big hill there, which you don't get down here. Big hill, sun's coming through. Everything's reflected in the water. I can look at that light. I know it's going to be maybe five minutes and it's gone. I just position myself, 500 millimeter telephoto, compress the image. Got the reflection. I I love the bridge. I love the park. And to me, this capture is just a peaceful feeling that I get walking by there. Mm -hmm. And that I know so many other people get walking by there. Yeah. This well, thank you so much. This has been really just enlightening and, and really fascinating to hear all your your history and, and to see all these beautiful images. So we thank you so much. I thank you. Let me just say one last thing. Please. That this being a small gallery space, I have hundreds of images online, GandhiHerwitz.com, just Google my name, whatever, you'll get there. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a mobile tool on my website. You can hold your phone up to your wall at home. You can see any image on any size on oh, any wall. Oh, that's great. It's a great guide. Awesome. And my online sales are benefiting from that tool. Sure.